Welcome everybody to the first in the series of the Growth Masterclass with the man, the myth, Gary Cady. Thank you for being here, my brother. Oh, and man. I'm Dr. Brian Laskin, your host. Thank you. You bet. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, Gary, you're just a wealth of knowledge to the dental industry. And I'm just so grateful that I get to share this Growth Masterclass with you, where we can help people at a crucial time as the offices are opening back up. Yep. Some offices are really feeling pinched. And, uh, and I'm, I'm, I think that we have put it together a great curriculum for people today. And, and so, uh, and across the entire growth masterclass, but this topic particularly, I think is, it's one of those things in dentistry, like, like right now, I believe that's going on where it can either tremendously help or tremendously hurt a dental practice. And it's really talking about the essential role of a bonus system within your practice. Right. Yep. Uh, and I, I mentioned it kind of like leading into this, but you know, I've had dental, I've had bonuses systems in my practice where it was completely demotivating. Like maybe it worked for a month, maybe it worked for two and then, and people expected it. Yeah. Uh, and it just withered and it was, was actually the opposite of, of a bonus system. It was like expected. And when the people didn't get it, they felt bad. And I think there's a lot of broken bonus systems out there. And so, you know, this is, you came up with this topic. And when you said, it, I was like, that is, I think one of the keys to, to uh, turbocharging a dental practice. You bet. You bet. And Brian, one of the things that, that this really helps a relevant issue um, because as you know, this is the biggest talent shift in dentistry that has ever seen, you know, we were talking the other day, like 50% of team members are looking for another practice, Right. And 50%, the other one and two, one and two are looking for another, you know, another position. Now, the other thing is that's really going on is the peep because there's a su supply and demand issue, you know, shrinkage has happened. You know, there's 10% less hygienists now uh, because they've either done other careers or they've, you know, they're, they're being at home with their kids. Um, and so that's really caused tension as well. Now, what we're going to talk about in the growth master class class is, you know, there's these old school problems and we're going to bring new school answers and solutions to these age old problems. I know your community is like crazy on the innovative edge and they don't want to apply the same thing over and over again that they've heard. So we're going to really go to work and, and bring the most innovative solutions, the most simple solutions so you can work smarter, not harder. Right. Oh, great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the we're all having the same problems in dentistry right now. Like mm -hmm. you said, the number one, two, and three is the team getting good people. And we've had a shrinkage, like a, I hate shrinkage, uh, oh. but, you know, lots, you know, in the, in the industry, having people just fleeing, fleeing the industry and then everybody's shifting around. Yep. Like you said, uh, I think it's, it's absolutely key. And I, I think that, uh, that a bonus system is one of those things that you can differentiate. You know, yep. if, if you think, oh, la well, last time it took us three weeks by putting a, a Craigslist ad uh, to, to get a hygienist, mm -hmm. well, everybody's doing that. So yep. you've got to do something to set yourself up differently. Exactly. I think, you know, what you're going to be talking about today with a bonus system, I just love it because it's the kind of thing where dentists will be like, it'll make them a little the right kind of nervous, right? Yep, right. exactly. And it's yeah. like, oh my gosh, I got to pay this. Yes, I, my... I love when doctors go, I can't wait for bonus day because they're giving 10 cents on every dollar and they're every dollar they're making, they're making 90 on and they are happy doing that. Right. So totally. this, the other thing that this is going to affect too, Brian, is it's going to affect a lot of new people coming in are asking for more money than the people that exist that have been dedicated through the pandemic, work through the pandemic. So they're like asking for crazy numbers. And, you know, some people are paying them, but like, how do you overcome that issue where you have existing people and you have new people coming in and you don't want to pay them a higher rate because it's not fair to the existing people? Well, th this will solve that problem as well. And, you know, just to reverse a little bit, you know, why do people put, want to put bonus systems in? This is what I've learned over the years. First is they want to motivate their team, right? The second thing is, is that they want to put accountability in and, and, and work on the drivers that build the practice, right? One of the things that my coach always told me is like, Gary, your team is not there to make you rich. 
And so they don't think like an entrepreneur, they think about what they need to do not to lose their job. Mainly, most team members are playing not to lose their job and not make mistakes. You and your spouse and your CPA and everybody involved in your organization uh, that are at a top level are playing to win. And you have this combination of team playing not to lose and you trying to play to win and it doesn't work. So the other thing that this is going to do today is really get that motivation, get that accountability and get them playing on a growth mindset, not the employer employee mindset that I, I was talking about. And, and that's really the other third reason why we want to do a bonus is because you want to grow. You're stuck. You know, you don't want to, you, you, you know, you, you, you don't want to stay the same, right? But here's the problem. 99% of the bonus systems that when I meet them, because I pick them up from practices, here's what they end up being, Bri. This is really important to know um, that they become the team thinks it's their salary, like they should be getting it. Um, but here's the problem the practice isn't any more profitable or behaviors were not changed. That's the other thing. They want to change practices behavior to focus in on bottom line outcomes. And they, the same people that were doing 20% of the work that made 20% of the revenue in the practice are doing it. And now there's a mismatch because the people that are doing the work to cause the outcome are resentful of the other people because they're getting a bonus and they haven't done anything to help get that bonus, right? You see this 100%. all the time, right, Brian? Oh yeah, I mean, I was the guy who had the, the bonus system. My first bonus system was like, well, okay, at the end of the month, I'll see where there's profit. And then if there's profit, and it's like, you're exactly right. Like the, my assistant who is, you know, just worried about, you know, putting food on the table and not getting fired. Is, right. isn't thinking about profitability at the end of the month. No. Right. And by the way, then I'm setting us up to both be disappointed. Exactly. Versus, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting. It's like, you know, so you have that now. Here's the other thing. Do you know who the biggest arsonists are? The biggest arsonists? <laughs> That's, I don't, I don't know if there's a good answer. If I say yes, I do know who they are. I think that's worse than if I say no. And the answer is no. Because <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who the best arsonists are, Gary. So please, please tell me. I really, uh, the biggest arsonist. And if you knew this, it'd be like, okay, you'd be in collusion with them, right? You know, <laughs> the biggest arsonists are firemen. I got it right. I guess. Yes. This. Yes. yes. Firemen. Why? Because they want something to do. They want to do what they love to do and put out fires. Right. Wow. Yeah, now, yeah. Now get this, watch. This is why practices get stuck because a team member is playing not to lose their game. They manifest the same problems over and over. And there's no interruption of that. And they occur as busy but not productive the difference between activity and proactivity and the difference between activity and outcome. And so I, again, by the way, I'm not blaming team members. This is a subconscious thing that goes on in human be behavior where you fill time or you spend time fixing problems. And that's a safe zone, even though it's not a profitable zone. Mm -hmm. So a lot of bonuses don't, interrupt the pattern of arson happening in practice. So I'm, again, I'm sharing all this with you because I want you to know what the, what the context or backdrop is that when I design this thing, it, it, it allows for the, all these things to happen. Number one, not to have the bonus be seen as a salary. Number two, shift from being busy to being outcome-based. Number three, have the team focus on the outcomes that you want them to focus on. And what's the biggest expense in a dental practice? Oh, wages. Wages, right? And most doctors are looking at commodities to cut and slice and shrink from. You know, we talked about it last week. You can't shrink your way to growth. So where the growth lies and where the profitability lies is in one place. A return on investment from wages turning your payroll into a profit center, turning, if, if I pay $15 an hour for this person, I should get this much productivity. And then if they go past that, 
I should reward them on new money only. Not, you know, you had mentioned something like you looked at most, most bonus systems, Brian, are built on collections at the end of the month in a collective group. That is recipe for disaster because watch what happens. You get five, you're a cosmetic dentist, you're a sleep dentist. You get five big cases. There's just happenstances in that month. And now you're sharing money that, that the team did not cause an outcome for or new money for. And you're now paying for something that mainly you as a doctor generated because of your reputation or marketing or whatever you did to create those big cases in that one particular month. And now you're having to pay for it. It's not what we call the triple win. So I'm gonna highlight this distinction too. The triple win is the patient wins, they get all the care they need. The team wins, they grow personally, professionally, and financially. And then the practice owner wins because the business is profitable. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, totally. I mean, I, that's one of the things that I, I love about, one of my favorite things about dentistry is that when I believe to my core that when done right, everybody wins. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think that uh, that is definitely true with bonus systems too, that uh, there's no reason why everybody can't win when it's done right. Exactly. And then the last thing about this is I wanted to have the doctor decentralized out of the middle of their business. We call it decentralizing the practice owner so that he or she can be like, what we look for is this is what we provide for the practice owner using this bonus system, economic security. Economic security is number one. Number two is clinically satisfied. Imagine not, you know, I can't tell you how many times doctors go, man, I just want to sell out. I'm so sick and tired of this. I don't want to deal with it anymore. Because I go, what do you really want to do? They go, I want to do what I signed up for, not what I didn't sign up for. I signed up to be a great clinician and I'm so good at it. I'm so badass at it. And that's what I want to, that's where I want to spend my time. So clinically satisfied. And the last thing is having the time to enjoy it. Because if you can enjoy you know, the wealth, like I have a lot, I know a lot of rich guys that don't have the time to enjoy their wealth. They, they're not around for their kids and their family. They, they don't get to travel when they're on vacation, they're working. And when they're working, they wish they were on vacation. They're never where they say they're never where they are. Right. So yeah. what, what this is going to do is it's going to give you a super low cost, all high return. And once you put the system in, the system runs itself and then you can then be free from it. And then we have, you know, docs that want to go from one practice to two, two to three, four, three to 10, right? You can do that. Or if you want to stay in that one practice, maximize it and spend less time chair side and more time pool side, you can do that too. So that's what this is available to, you know, as we unpack this bonus system. Well, that's great. I, I mean, I think you hit on so much of what, what dentists are looking for, right? I mean, I, and I think the other, the other pain point that I think the right bonus system does like this is it, it, is it removes stress and tension and conflict with the team, yeah. right? Which I think is a, a huge issue with practices. And, you know, it goes to, it goes to what you're talking about, that because that, that, that decreases economic stability. It makes, makes, it sucks up your time and energy. Uh, and so, so I, I, yeah, I, I think it's great. I think yeah. it's great. Now let's jump on the court. Now, I'll, I'll do it. I always like metaphors. I like visuals to understand things. And so I came up with this idea and this is usually how I explain the beginning of building this thing. So it puts your, your attention in the right spot. And so, you know, I use like, you know, we have a mutual friend, Alec and his, he's like a master chess man. Like the, I think he's like the, the, the guru in, in his country, his daughter is like seven and she's the goo now the new guru. Right. And you know, this idea of chess. And I said, if you could pick any piece of a chess game to beat me and you get, you get this piece and I don't get this piece, I will still beat you. And this is the champion that, you know, he's, he's like the best in the world. Okay. So I go, I go, yeah, he goes, yeah. He goes, I'll take the queen because she can move as many places. And if you don't have a queen, I'm going to be able to dominate you. And I go, I got you beat. And he said, oh, I don't know about that. I go, yes, I do. I, it was a little, you know, I asked the question in a unique way. I said, any piece to the game, the piece I'm picking is the game board. Why? Because when I got the game board, I can tell the pieces how to move. So I can tell your queen to move like a pawn and I can tell all my pawns to move like a queen and I got you beat. 
And most people don't look at their practice, Brian, as a, you know, that if I own the game board, then I could put great controls in place to solve the reoccurring problems in dentistry at the root cause. Does that make sense? Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's uh, it's one of those things too, that, you know, I think many, many dentists probably inherited a bonus system or they, they talked to their friend and put it in place and they didn't like take a step back and, and look at the psychology of what goes into it like you have and, and unpacked it to a way that, that really motivates people that, that makes sense for everybody. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I, I like the analogy of, of taking the board because, because I would just, I would just, if I was playing with Alec, I wouldn't even put the board down. I'd, I'd just, I'd, I'd hide it. <laughs> I wouldn't step on that playing field. No, not, not, not at Jack. all. <laughs> but here's what we want to do. We want to get the team addicted to high performance and high productivity, not high maintenance. We want to move the team from high maintenance to high performance. We want to put the right people in the right places doing the right things. All right. So in order to do that in the dental practice, you know, I'm a big, big, big Yankee fan. You know, I'm, here I am. I got my Yankee gear on, right? I love baseball. I won't talk to you about it because we, we share different joys together, but <laughs> baseball is awesome, right? And, you know, if you don't have the right people in the right place doing the right things, especially in dentistry, see in the back office, I'll just do a quick overview. The back office has delineated natural responsibilities. There's dental assistants, hygienists, doctors, right? Associates. So that's the back and you, you default into delineation. The front office doesn't have that. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When definitely. every, when everyone's accountable for everything, no one's accountable for nada. And what a dental practice must have accountabilities in, in order to be profitable is you need somebody managing your time and somebody managing your money. If you don't break that front office into those two roles, what happens is you end up having everybody being busy because they don't want to do the most confronting things like fill the schedule, like overcome objections in the treatment plan. That, that the ability to do that ethically and responsibly is what changes the game and takes, my, my grandfather said it best, he said, win, play, show. The win horse might only win by a nose, but the payoff is tenfold. These are the nuances that people don't put their attention on in the front office. And if you don't have that structure of having the right people in the right places, like if Derek Jeter is not on shortstop, that the twins are going to hit the ball through shortstop. And that's what happens in a dental practice. There's no accountabilities for time and money. And they just throw people at the problem, not, not roles at the problem. So when you delegate tasks, Brian, instead of responsibilities and outcomes, you're chasing what people are doing throughout their day versus the having them own the outcome that they're responsible for. Is that clear? But, oh yeah. And you know, I, I love the idea of having those to be two separate roles managing time and managing production. Right. I think that that's, that, that's genius. So do you, in the bonus system, do you, cause those, are, those two are related when it comes to bonusing. Right. Uh, so how, would, how, how does the, Let's get into it a little bit. Like, like how does the bonus system work to account for both of those? Yeah. So let's, let's start with, we design, instead of having our dentists live a defaulted life, meaning that you work your butt off, you run as hard as you can, and then you reduce your expenses as much as you can, and you keep as much as you can. That's the typical get on the treadmill and run. We do it completely different. We ask our doctors how much they want to make and how much time they want to spend doing it. I'll get, I'm going to do an easy, quick example. One doctor, one hygienist. And we could do this for 10 doctors and, a, and 20 hygienists. Let's say you want to uh, do a million dollars. Let's say you write off uh, you know, 20%. That means you have to do 1.2 million. Um, and then you want to, you want to, you want to profit. Um, let's just say you, know, you want to profit 30, 35% of your million, right? So that's a, that's a clear now algorithm to get there, right? And then what we do is we reverse engineer. So you have to do 100,000 a month. If you have one doctor and let's say two hygiene, you would need to do 5,000 in the doctor's schedule and 1,500 in each of the hygiene schedules. That appointment coordinator is responsible for those outcomes per day. 
So a lot of people are block scheduling and they're doing all this stuff. And they're just like what I call white space fillers. They're filling the white space versus is it filled to 5,000, 1,200, 1,500, 1,500? 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, and is it, does it end up there in that day? When it does, you pay this person, and I'm just going to do a cursory. We adjust and customize this $10 per column per day. So now my appointment coordinator can make $30 a day when 5,500 and 1,500 shows up. $30 a day times 16 days worked is $480. Now watch this. You only get that paid if we, may, if we collect $100,000 at the end of the month. Now we have the triple win in effect. The, the patients win because now they're showing up and getting the care they need. The team member wins because they, they know and they're getting dopamine every day. See, the other thing we need to get is dopamine flowing every day. When you have a monthly bonus that's too far out and they, they only think about it on the 26th, 27th, 28th, 29th of the month. And if you're not close, they let it go and they, they, they don't play. But when you play in the first hour of each month individually by position and you do it on production and collection, now you have everything handled and you're not handing out bonuses based upon you know whether you got five big cases in or not here's the other thing this does if you have roller coaster production days some busy days where you're running with roller skates on and you make 20 cents and some days where you don't have enough in there it goes away and you get this beautifully designed consistent schedule created by a person who's owning it and you don't have to train them on all the nuances of it because they either did it or they didn't on the outcome. Now, they're coming to you for training and development if they're not hitting their number because they got skin in the game. <laughs> it's great. You, you, you said a lot of fantastic things there. And so one, one thing I want to highlight is the value of, you know, I, I mentioned it with like the bonus system that I had that didn't work, which was trying to incentivize your assistant at a monthly goal, it's too big. It can't, it's so hard to see is if I do this sealant over lunch, I'm going to somehow maybe be more profitable than I'll get, uh, you just can't do it. Right. And, and, and I, for some reason that feels better as a dentist, but it doesn't once you see like, if you know your $8,000 day is scheduled, is that worth 30 bucks to you? Mm -hmm. Well, yes. Right. I mean, come on. Right. I mean, all, all day, long every day and that's the like you said the, the roller coaster thing what i've experienced with the roller coaster uh is that you know you're like oh my gosh all the money's coming in you see the quickbooks going out oh all the bills are being paid all the money's going you're like you don't even know if you're profitable but if you reverse engineer it like you said and you are competent you're gamifying this you're, you're giving dopamine shots to your to your your scheduling coordinator so that you're setting your days up like that I mean, you know exactly what's going on all the time. The, the roller coaster, it's 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 annoying, but but the but the stress comes in when you don't know where the money's going, right? And you're yeah. doing that, right? You're you're doing that on the front end, and you're that's worth <laughs> thirty bucks for sure. Totally. Now look what happens. That thirty bucks for you as a business owner is not that bad. Now we're gonna keep adding a few more here to each position. But to that person to make $480 more for the month, and you're only doing it on like having your life work exactly the way you want it. I mean, it's just, and, it, and look, I, you know, I've installed this all around the world, th you know, thousands and thousands of practices. So it's been perfected. Um, you know, there's some nuances, like if you're picking up an old bonus system, people are afraid with the new one and there's a transition plan. And then you know, there's like, you know, there's all kinds of like general nuances, but today, you know, we want to give concept to people so you can get a sense of it. And it's in my book, million dollar dentistry, you know, and people will be able to get a copy of this. We have audio, we have digital, we have, you know, print printed, um, you know, and it's crazy, Brian, people will just go and, and create that thing. And, um, and they say, I can't, I get, I get emails all the time about how it's changed people's lives. And, and what's really fun is when I get it from team members saying, I thought I was stuck. I, I didn't think I could, you know, grow past where I am. And to make a five, $500 extra from my position is, is awesome. And I'll never leave. And when you get, you know, when this, you can attract people because you have a bonus system and you can retain them. 
you know, it's just amazing. So that's the appointment coordinator. And then, you know, let's go around and unpack each position real quick here. Um, I think it'd be really valuable to people. Um, you know, the next is the, um, so what's really cool is in this system, it's like a, a crisscross system. You'll have a front accountability and a back accountability. So, um, you know, what happens is, is that the appointment coordinator and the hygienist really work beautifully together because what happens now is we work on the average annual value of a patient. So two profies, two exams, set of bite wings, a crown and a buildup annually is the annual value of a patient. Let's just say a PPO practice, let's just call it $1,300. $650 now goes unused if one hour goes away. If you begin to look at every patient's value of $1,300, if they're coming in twice, now all of a sudden your, your intention and attention of making sure every single you know, hygiene appointment is filled is, is a must. So it changes the intentionality of it. The other thing that happens is with a hygienist, um, most hygienists are stuck in the old model of you know, either, you know, polishing teeth, gum gardening, you know, there's very few, you know, whole body health. We talk about the four levels of, of practice, the maintenance in your book, you know, you, you, you beautifully depict this, which is it's, it's emergency maintenance, optimal, and then what we call complete health. And, you know, when you get your hygienist um, educating from whole body health, the impact of the mouth being the gateway to whole body health. Now, all of a sudden, you know, what do you think the average now, this, this is a big one. The average nationwide, we have 10, we have access to 10 million treatment plans, Bri. Percentage-wise, what do you think profi to perio ratio is? How many people get a chance? Let's say if there's 50% of adults have some form of perio, how many do you think get diagnosed in treatment plant? Oh, and man, accepted? this is going to be a grim number, my friend. <laughs> I'm going to go, I'm going to go 50% have perio. I will say 20%. Nice, nice. I mean, you're closer than anybody I've ever heard. It's 8% diagnosed, 4% ah. treated. Eight oh, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm less than halfway there, but yes. No, you're close <laughs> because I'm telling you, a lot of people go, ah, oh, you know, 40, 50%. I mean, we have, our, our, you know, oh yeah, no, it's crazy. No, I'm telling you right now, it's eight and four. So 4% 4 of people are diagnosed and treated. And that's insane. Wow. That's is insane. It, I mean, look, we can't, get to all the dentistry that needs to be done in the world. If you just really, if somebody said a standard of care, a healthy mouth baseline, and that's one of the things we do in a dental, um, in the, in the hygiene office is set a standard of, these are all the symptoms oh, nice. that exist. If you don't have what the benchmark is, it's just anecdotal people feelings. If they have time to talk about it, it's like the most archaic business model I've ever seen in my life. The the traditional dental business model. And when you give a hygienist, these are all the symptoms and a patient education tool. It's like, how many people are healthy that walk through a hygiene chair, you know, in a day? How many people are soft tissue, hard tissue, healthy? What do you, I mean, I mean- In a, in a column of eight, maybe one. Yeah, exactly, maybe. right? Yeah. So like, think about how much possibility we have. And then we have people who are like letting these patients go through and, and operate from supervised neglect. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, oh, it's brutal. No. And I, I mean, I even think back to like, you know, before we would calibrate with our team members to make sure we're on the same page. Like if, if that, if, if there was a patient that needed a crown on number 18 and last time I had done number 31 and it was a pain, <laughs> the likelihood of me treat, like, I, I hate to say it, but like, uh, I don't want to go through that hour again, you know? Uh, but, and so, I mean, it's just, you're right. It's all, fee I mean, even when you know it's like it, the feelings come into play and it and it doesn't and I, it's, you're hurting everybody right you're hurting the practice you're hurting the, the team yep. you're hurting the patient it's just uh, it's having it set up set it set it and forget it right exactly so the hygienist is um in order to get him or her to think bigger and really change behaviors we give them 10% above the benchmark. So if they do, they have a $2,000 day, there's $500 difference. 10% of that $500 is 50 bucks. And they get 1% of the treatment that comes out of that room for that day that gets agreed to, paid for, and scheduled. That's 1%. pretty awesome. Oh, that is awesome. That is awesome. So yeah, you get a $10,000 case, you know, do the numbers. It's, you know, if, on, on average, an average day of eight patients is somewhere from ten to fifteen thousand dollars a day of dentistry. 
do the math. You, you know, if you're a hygienist now, all of a sudden you have two, two ways to make it on your own production. And then on the production that you generate that gets created, because here's the thing in today's single office practices, if the dentist has to do all the education and the closing of cases, you can't possibly run an efficient practice. So if you should have one doctor to two hygiene, and if you have an hour of dentistry that needs to be done at the chair and you have to do two hygiene checks, it should be five minutes in each hygiene check. And if your hygienist does all the education, you walk in and call balls and strikes because you're the only one that can diagnose, you're back at the chair for 50 minutes and you close two cases and the team did the, all the work, not you. That's decentralizing the doctor. That's absolutely key. And I, I want to point out to, to, to the dentists that are listening to, because I know when I started bonusing uh, like this, my, I had this idea, like what's $5 or what's, you know, what's, what's $3 or, and, and I think two things happen. One, $5 is a big deal. <laughs> and, and two, it shows that you, it's really just the showing that you were, we're rowing in the same direction, right? When I win, you win. And the, the, even if it was a 50 cents, I feel like that, that showing that you're working, that you're both on the same team, working in the right to dire same direction, I think has magical effects in an immediate way. Like you're talking about. I mean, if, if I do this, then I know I get that it's, it's, it, that is making it clear and simple like that means everything. And I want to go back to your, your dopamine hitting, your, your gamifying this. Well, if people think that this is, uh, this is kind of uh, flippant, this is how Facebook is so huge, right? I mean, this is why social media is changing the, our social structure as in a, 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 right now completely, right? It's, it's using these hardwired tactics to our brains to, but, but we're using it to elevate people's oral health, not to grab their attention and sell them stuff on YouTube or whatever, right? So yeah, I think, I think, I think it's easy to discount the power of of a five dollar incentive that's done right like this there's no doubt watch social dilemma if you haven't seen it it will show you the science behind how facebook you know did not become myspace because they know how to get that dopamine fix like i have a lot of doctors like who it's really interesting who are who are going on social media diets and the addiction is so it's like carbohydrates for people and but they're creating so much time for themselves because they didn't realize how much time they were spent flipping around and and also getting negative emotions by saying, I'm not as good as this person. And we will spend less time. You know, we can go deep here, but psychologically science based, you know, motivation. And here's the thing. Automation acknowledgement is the number one thing team members want that they not they're not getting. This puts an automated acknowledgement system in place that, you know, communication that doesn't happen. Like, I, I don't say that I love and respect you as much as I should, because I do, you're awesome, but I don't say it. So when you put the system in, the system actually does it. And we'll take this, you know, the advanced levels of this, um, just, to, just to paint a picture, is you actually tie your employees to what we call our dream program. So millennials love this, especially the dream program. And we can deepen this at another session down the road. Dream program is very important because when we, here's what happens. The team writes out a hundred dreams. Now those hundred dreams, the bonus goes to fulfill on those hundred dreams. Most people forget about dreaming team members. They're just in survival and scarcity. Some of the biggest dreams is go on a Disney cruise stuff like that. But if they don't dream it and they don't have a mechanism to make the money to pay toward it, they don't do it. And we actually celebrate those. It's in the team room with the pictures. So it's like a visual. So there's like, it, this goes downstream even more, but I want to get the, the foundation in, in this session. But can you see like the power of like relating your team member to fulfilling on their dreams? And now all of a sudden you're enrolling the whole family. And now when you go home and complain about the office, the husband goes, don't forget, they really helped you live our dreams. So you should be a little nicer to your boss. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I, I, there was one study that I saw that I, that I always think about is uh, they, they, they studied people going on vacation. And it wasn't going on. It wasn't the actual vacation that people appreciate that like enjoyed the most or actually the memory. It was the anticipation of 
going on vacation. This is why, like, I'm always like, we surprised our kids with a trip to Disney World. Why would you do that? I'm going to tell my kids in 20 years, we're going to Disney World, right? <laughs> I think, I mean, you, you really got to build that. And, you know, and like when we would have a, like a, a team trip or a team event, we would build it up. And what you're doing here is you're into, you're individualizing that anticipation building and then doing the, 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 the gamified appreciation, $5, $10, $20 up a, a day up to, to it's, 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 it's a fantastic system. I love it. Yeah. Let me just finish them all out. So people can get it. The assistant feels like she is, or he is on the low man or woman on the totem pole and they're the most trusted by the patient. So, and they're the least engaged in patient education or knowing numbers. So now, you know, the, the number that they're associated with is the, they're the co-pilot for the dentist, but not from turning rooms in sterilizing instruments and comforting people. Did the dentist do their number at 5,000 for the end of the day? If you walk in the morning huddle, that's when we alert all these numbers. It brings the scoreboard up. And by the way, humanist people hate numbers. So you go, this is a scoreboard for how healthy we're getting people today. And the scoreboard's not matching for what we know is a win. We're at 4,800 in Dr. Laskin's uh, office, the assistant immediately, because now he or she is bonused, let's just say $20 for her column or $30. Let's say it's 30 to match the equivalent of the front office. $30 for that day. Now all of a sudden she's going or he's going, hey, Mrs. Smith's got, you know, a crown to do. I'm going to educate her. We have a half hour. Let's get it done and let's do it. You know, so now all of a sudden they're looking at the currency of what the practice needs, what the patient needs, and it changes their behavior, right? And then the treatment coordinator is 1% on treatment that gets signed, paid, and closed and scheduled into the schedule. So now you have people creating the demand and, and the interest people closing it down before the patient leaves, having them show up in the number that we need for the day, and then keeps the machine going. And the reason why the, the safest place for people to invest like banks and private equity firms in dentistry is because we're the only business that has a reoccurring business model. Patients know they need to come back every six months. And so this machine once built, Bri, is, is a it's better than McDonald's. It is better. Like I would have a thousand dental practices built like this before I have a thousand McDonald's. Like, oh, yeah. And, I, and I, as you know, I've got a McDonald's in my parking lot and that thing yep. has two drive through lanes going 24 seven, but I would not trade yep. for sure. You are hundred percent correct. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, that's the general business model. Um, um, is there, did I leave anything out from a listener standpoint that you might've well, not heard? I'm thinking like from the dentist perspective, like what are the pitfalls? I'm thinking like I'm, uh, to play devil's advocate. If, if I'm a dentist and I'm going, well, uh, I'm in a $5,000 a day scheduled. And then what if I have a $5,000 case? Does my team go, well, now let's spread, spread the next out for the next yeah. two, two and a half years. So we choke yeah. our production. Yeah. No. It, it, and look, there's always going to be nuances like that. Like, all right, I had a $5,000 case. So that day they get, they get a free zone. It's not a, it's, it's like every day they're working on the same playing field. I want to give you more context to it. You know, so often it's easy to see like nickel and diamond, like, Hey, I, I had the $5,000 case and I closed it and they, should they get it? Like when you get into that, you're missing the big picture. You're really looking myopically because if your life works and you get to work, you know, instead of four days a week, you're working three days a week, instead of taking two weeks off, you're taking four or six and you're making the same amount of, you know, same amount of money consistently, like an insurance policy. You don't have to stress over wondering if you don't, if you're going to pay, you know, if you can go on vacation this month and you're going to have a schedule filled. Yes, you will, because the machine takes care of when you close cases this month, you know, they're going to show up next month. It gives you peace of mind, the time you want, the money consistently being delivered without worry. What is that worth? Is that worth more to you than you gave a free day to somebody because they they made their number just because the it automatically happened right? If you oh, really 100%. start getting it right, yeah, I mean, yeah, okay, no, well. I think I think it's it's fantastic. Plus, then then you don't have the you know if you have the days where it's where everybody's on a treadmill, right? Then you have to deal with the the fallout of the team, right? Versus people who are you know I think that's what 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 the reason why. 50% of 
general team members are looking for another practice right now mm -hmm. because they're not happy where they are. And if you, you know, if anybody's online looking at how, you know, there's fights going off between hygienists and dentists all over the place, right? right? It's like, let's just, let's just align in the interest of the practice and the patient. And that's kind yep. of what this does. Yeah. yeah. I love it. Well, the, the, it's really interesting because yes, there's 50% that are looking for a position, but the problem is people can't get them over to their practice because they haven't differentiated themselves and they're going, why should they, they're, they're staying in the hell that they know versus the hell that they don't know. Right. <laughs> so or that like, I'd rather stay with this devil than the devil I don't know. Right. And, you know, I, I say that lightly, but it's like, you know, Brian, it's like, it's like, if you show somebody that your that your life is going to be better. You're going to fulfill in your dreams. You're going to be able to make more money. You're going to have more fun. See, that's what I want to get into right now. I want to talk about the different personas. There's four different personas. So like, even if, if you you're watching this right now, you've processed this from your primary persona. I want to highlight this because this is, this is a nuance here, not only for you and how you interpret what we just shared, but for the receiver, when you implement it. Okay. So Absolutely. there's four personas here, Brian. One is the competitive. It's like you and I, what is the game? How do we play it? I'm We're more competitive gonna... than you are. <laughs> you know, yes, you are. Because <laughs> you're silently more competitive than I am. But I freaking love it because like, you know, whenever I play a tennis player who's better than me, it brings my game up. So you're awesome like that i dig it because like i that's why i love playing with you because it's like <laughs> passing the ball playing the ball i was just trying to be competitive and saying i'm yeah, more competitive no, I know. But that's <laughs> but, no but you do it you're like a silent competitive like you don't even know what's happening and you're like crushing the ball it's awesome right so you and i are competitive i'm secondary humanist i, I care deeply about people so you know I, you know but if you're primary humanist everything you just heard me say if you're a dentist sitting there you're going this is all about selling in numbers. This isn't going to work in my practice. You know, I'm not going to do that. Um, in fact, you know, my team, the minute you show them numbers, the game's over because you attracted a bunch of other humanists. And then meanwhile, there's nothing getting sold in your practice. And when I say sell, that's not a bad word. When I say sold, the humanist goes, we don't sell anything here. So, and again, I'm not invalidating any of the humanists because I am one. So I'm a competitive humanist, care about people. What's the game? How do we win it? Humanist currency is being validated so like if we have a humanist hygienist it, it would be like how'd you do today did you do your 1500 she goes i don't even know i go did you have a good day she goes yeah i did because i had eight patients and every that every one of them told me i was amazing that's their currency so yeah. you have to know when you implement this the nuance of speaking to the humanist is this is going to be your scoreboard you care deeply about people you want to make a big difference. We needed some form of way of tracking whether this is actually happening in your, in your responsibility or not. And it, this is what we've come up with as the scoreboard for how healthy and the impact you're making on people. It's 1500 bucks. Now all of a sudden that person can hear differently, right? Mm -hmm. No, totally. Now 75% of people are humanist. The other one is methodical and this I'm not, I don't need to know the steps to get there, but I had to retrain myself on how I explain things into steps and methodical bite-sized pieces so people can understand them. Because 75% of the people I work with either care about people pleasing and validation and not making a mistake. A methodical does not want to make a mistake. They're risk adverse. So that's where the analysis paralysis comes in. That's where resistance to new thinking comes in. Think about the odds of this. And this is why dentists always have trouble implementing, Brian. It's because if you put numbers in, the humanists resist. And if you put a new initiative in, the methodical resist because they don't want to make a mistake. You're not going to implement anything. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I, I can, I, I feel that through dental practices across the country, a hundred percent. And, you know, if you, if you, if you do what you did yesterday, you're not going to be attracting the team that, that you need to track going exactly a hundred percent. Yeah. So how, how, so I'm thinking about like when I bring on new team members, to the practice, we oftentimes talk about how other, other dental practices say they're a family. Right. And I think that, that I, I look at us as, and this is, I shouldn't be telling you this because you're a sports guy and I'm not, but, but I, I like, we're, we're like, we're like, we're like the Yankees going to win 
the World Series, right? Mm -hmm. And we don't allow Pee Wee players on our team, right? Mm -hmm. And and what I love about your bonus system that you're that you're sharing is that it attracts the world class player, right? Mm -hmm. If you tell somebody this is how we compensate, they're gonna be like, ooh. Uh, game on right and, and this is how i want this is the team this team isn't playing peewee ball they're playing they're playing to win right uh, so how do you how do you communicate to the, to attract those people yeah well there's the the competitive the way to communicate to a competitive is is to speak what do you so I just talk, I, I just i just attract more competitors is what you're saying yeah and what i'm saying is you you want a mix of everybody because if you have too many competitors you're going to have a new set of problems called haymakers going off all day people beating the crap out of each other like you know, <laughs> i believe I've been in, there. <laughs> yeah i believe in a very balanced um balanced team now you could be a humanist and a high performing player you could be a methodical and be a high performing player um you can get them there and we do it all the time but what i what i i always write ads and when we write ads to attract people we'll have a whole session on this um Great. but you have to lead with the purpose, the vision, purpose, and values of the business. You have to, they have to know what you stand for. Like Patagonia, I, I pass Eddie Bauer, I pass a North Face. I go, I go to Patagonia because they stand for open space, right? And nature and keeping, you know, lands, you know, pristine. Um, you have to stand for something because if you stand for some, if you don't stand for something, you fall for everything. And um, this is one of the key factors in attracting the right type of person. When you go, look, we're stand for um, being the number one, having San Diego be the number one healthiest city in the US. Here's what that does. The competitive goes, I wanna play to win that game and cause, cause that to happen. A methodical goes, how, do, how are they doing that? A humanist goes, that is a noble cause and I wanna play. And a spontaneous, that's about 5% of people. They just wanna have fun. They go, that, that's too much work for me. I'm gonna go look for a fun place to work. Right? They won't go there. You don't want a lot of spontaneous people, not bad people, but they don't have a good attention spam and they don't follow through on a lot of things. So you get a lot of incomplete things happening around you. So, you know, again, not judgment. I have spontaneous on my team that are amazing, but I don't put them in places where they have to attention to detail. So when you really understand the nuances of, of the players, you write the ad from here's our, here's our position in the workplace. Here's, here's the role that you have. And the role is not the role is not nine to five hygienist. It's we believe that hygiene is the is is the the gateway to whole body health. So you're going to get you're not going to get the tooth polisher. You're not going to get the gum gardener. You're going to get the optimist, the, the person that does optimal dentistry and complete health dentistry. So you say what you believe, by the way, people. People go to work for people that have the same beliefs, but if you don't espouse the beliefs and it's nine to five dental office across town, they go, that's vanilla. And I'm not playing in that. Right. Well, when we're, when you're talking about compensation though, cause that's what, you know, we're talking about this bonus system where you're gamifying it and you're giving people uh, more immediate bonuses yeah. based on, you know, the goals that you reverse engineers was phenomenal. Yeah. It, that's, uh, so how do you talk to your team about it? The, the new person or the existing? I'm thinking specifically the new person because I think yeah. there's 50% of people looking around and I want to attract those the right ones to my office. Vision that this that the job that you're, you're coming in is not like the one you're, you're leaving. And then third is that we have a compensation plan that's more advanced than anyone else that includes a daily bonus that allows you to for the area that you're responsible for to, that you make an impact for to get paid for. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And I that's, think, that's the piece. Yeah. I think that's where, that's what kind of where I was headed with the, you know, we're all, we're, we're a players at this office. Cause we, mm -hmm. we reward people based on their performance and the, those, those that, those that are the best will recognize that the, the opportunity there, I feel like. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the game. So really like what we talked about today was, you know, getting your team to being addicted to the productivity, not busyness, right? And then really getting the right people in the right places doing the right things. And then moving from like once a year acknowledgement, which is like usually a review when you give somebody a dollar, you're giving them the dopamine hit on a daily basis. And by the way, you don't have to give raises because the raise comes, excuse me, Brian, the raise comes from the performance that you're doing on each day. 
And so that really handles that. And then really you just gamify this thing and you're rewarding daily outcomes versus like something that may happen at the end of the month or end of the year. And it really changes everything. I think that's so huge. I think that so many dental practices are just like worried when the earth goes around the sun one more time and they're just like, Oh, it's time to now I have to have the conversation and you know, every, you know, the insurance company has been cutting things and this and that and the other, but if you've reverse engineered it and you gamify it, fight it, people aren't going to be asking for raises because they're, because they're just going to be making their own raises. And that's, exactly. that's, that's beautiful. You um, bet. I think, I think that, uh, for, for dental practice, I, I, and I, and I know that it's scary to implement a new bonus system like this, but I can say, I mean, having done a bonus system where, where we bonus like this, it's, it is a complete game changer for your practice. So I think, uh, I mean, it's just go, you go from, you know, as you've said before, it's like you go from, from trying to push people up a hill to getting pulled up the hill, which is like, then you just sit back and, and, uh, and, and like you said, at the, at the beginning of our, of, of this first incredible module of the growth mash class, you said how, uh, you know, you basically get to, have the time you wanted to, to enjoy your economic security and focus your time and energy on doing quality dentistry that everybody deserves. Cause you know, I, I one thing that I've heard that I really like is the numbers tell a story. And so for the humanists there uh, who are listeners um, it's all about trying to provide the best care we can. And, and those numbers are how we determine that we do that. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no doubt. And, you know, one of the things that this does too, uh, Brian, is it creates the demand for the things that you want your team to do. So instead of having to tell them over and over, we need to train, we need to role play this, they all hate doing all that because they have no need to do it because their life doesn't get any better when they do those things. That's for you. It's very, you know, when you really start breaking it apart and you go, that's selfish because for me, they're looking at what's in it for me. But when you put, skin in the game. Now, all of a sudden, the things that you, you had to like shake them to do, they're actually coming to you and saying, how do I get better at doing this? How do I get better at doing that? And they're getting better at only one thing. See, if you give somebody 10 things, they're not going to remember to do all those things. But if your appointment coordinator has got to fill the schedule to this number, your treatment coordinator closes this number of cases, your, uh, your hygienist does this production and this much treatment out of her room or his room, and the, the um, assistant is driving the same measure that the doctor is, now you have everybody playing golf on a golf course. You know, before you do this, you got the doctor, let's say, and playing golf and your team's playing football. And what they're doing is they're blocking your growth because they're sitting over here as in the employee mentality, which is, let me just get through this day and not lose my job versus you playing to win the game and be more productive. So you can be more profitable. And now you got everybody playing golf and now we, we got, we got game on. Yeah. Well, I would like to say it's like you and me playing chess and, and, and you can't play because I got the board, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> hey, when you know better, you could do better. So now, now, you know, since we're so competitive with one another, I can't give you my secrets because you'll just take them and crush me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah. I, and I, I think, you know, I, I, I love the perspective that you gave about uh, getting everybody playing the same sport. Cause I, I really think the clarity that, that, and, and giving everybody one number, because I think every, so many of us listening, myself included, uh, have gone to a course. We're like, oh, I'm going to do this thing. And then you, then, you, then you drift away from it, right? Mm -hmm. But if there's a laser focus, one number, there's no drifting. That's mm -hmm. it, right? Yeah. You're in charge, 5,000, 1,500, 1,500. And then, and then if that happens, guess what? Everybody wins. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. And there's really two numbers here, 5,000 and 1,500. You don't, that doesn't go out of existence. And when you have your morning huddle, now all of a sudden people are using dashboards like dental Intel and the new dashboards that are coming out. Like they can now look at that and go, Oh, now I'm, now I want to look at the scale. Cause before it was like, I'm overweight. I don't want to look at the scale. Why should I even care what you weigh? Right. Yeah. Right now Ooh. you're going, Hey, Let's look at the morning huddles here. How am I doing? Do I have enough to get what I'm going to get out of the day? It's a, 
you talk about like everybody goes, Gary, can you get a better morning huddle, motivational morning huddle? I go, yeah, you got to change the context, put a game in place. And now everybody's like, you know, I remember, remember when Sully landed the plane in the Hudson river. This is oh, a great yeah. one. This is a great story. It was right behind my house. I lived on the Hudson right here in New York city. And, and I remember seeing that plane sitting out there the next day I was flying Bry. I never, I used to read, you know, back in the day, I used to read the paper and I used to like paper papers and uh, I'm, I, the flight attendant would come up and she'd give me the instructions. I wouldn't pay attention to that. All of a sudden I'm like, well, what do you want me to do? Like, <laughs> just, just, yeah, I do that and buckle and the tray. Yeah, I got you. I, I'm here. I'm here. Well, thank you for sharing that. Meanwhile, I never used to pay attention to that. No, seriously. It's like, oh, yeah. how do you create attention and intention and attention? You change the game and wake people up and put skin in the game. And now magic starts happening. And all the things that you had reoccurring, you're going to have a new set of problems, which is how do I produce all this dentistry? Because we're booked out six months. That's what happens. Oh, that's beautiful. And I mean, to, to bring it down to the, the Sully story, if, if you're at the morning huddle meeting and in your schedule is $4,800, right? And your assistant is bonused at 5,000, guess who's going to find a couple hundred dollars filling to do, right? I mean, yeah. that's the way that's the way it works. And then you don't have to do anything except sit back and just do dentistry, which is it's beautiful. Exactly. Gary, thank you so much for uh, for doing this growth masterclass with me and yeah. your wealth of knowledge. And uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Yeah, we'll see you next month. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate you. I love the way we, we collaborate together here. Absolutely. And how, how can people find more information if they want to find out more information about you, Next Level Practice, bonus systems, how to implement things? Yeah, you can um, go to Next Level Practice and um, we have an availability where um, I'm offering your community 10 slots on my schedule uh, and there'll be a link here uh, as well. And you can just click here or go to my site and you'll get right on my calendar. Um, and then I offer a half hour to people, especially, you know, because people in the upgrade community are, are rock stars and innovators. So, you know, we'll have a no obligation half hour call about what's possible. And you can ask about this, this topic or anything you'd like to talk about and, um, and just give you know, give you uh, wisdom and feedback and thoughts so you can go away and, and, and go implement. So well, that's, that's great. What we, I mean, yeah. I mean, there's probably, I'm sure there's a load of questions when people are thinking of how they can customize this bonus system for their own practice. So definitely take Gary up on that. Uh, Click on the link and go to nextlevelpractice.com. Thanks again, Gary. Thanks. Good night, everybody.